The Chinese EV market is full of companies that are pushing boundaries, but nobody tramples tradition quite like Hi-Fi. Their first two models, the six-seater X SUV and the Z sedan, had a combination of sci-fi design, never-before-seen features, and eye-watering price tag that made them stand out from the crowd. But while cars like this will get you plenty of attention on social media, they're simply too expensive and, uh, let's be honest, too polarizing to sell in any great number. That's why we have this, the new entry-level model from Hi-Fi, the Hi-Fi Y. But the question remains, can this company manage to create a more mainstream, more affordable SUV while still keeping that touch of insanity that made them so compelling? Time to find out. With hands-on test drives and reviews of exciting Chinese market vehicles, Wheelsboy is the number one source for China Auto Insights. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. The design brief for the Y would seem to be, give us a hi-fi, but tone it down a little bit. They've been successful in that, I think. If you think of the X and the Z as alien ambassadors from another world that really don't hide what they are, the Y, the Y is more like an alien that's at least trying to blend in with the rest of society. This was partially done, I'm sure, to create a more mainstream design, but also for cost reasons. Take, for example, the LEDs. Hi-Fi on the X and the Z used about 18 million LEDs, including LED matrices both front and rear. On the Z, they even had them on the side of the car. In the case of the Y, however, they really only have them up here on the front end. Hi-Fi seems like a company that lives by a few very important creeds. First, when it comes to LEDs, the more the merrier. And two, never have normal doors. As you can see, there are no door handles on the side of this car. In order to open the electronically operated doors, you have to hit a button right here. Don't worry, instead of having LEDs embedded in this strip, like on the Z, this thing has four ultrasonic radars that make sure it doesn't open up into any obstacles or people or dogs or pillars or anything like that. But as is the case with every Hi-Fi, the highlight is always the second row doors. In this case, the car takes after the Model X by having some incredible two-part doors. If I touch this button here on the D-pillar, there we go. Don't worry, there are also ultrasonic sensors on the top there to make sure it doesn't open up into the roof of your garage, and it has rain sensing, so it won't open up when it's raining. Now that's going to be pretty hard to follow up, but luckily I've got just the thing. Let's talk a little bit about cargo space, why don't we? This thing has 692 liters of space behind the second row, and that doesn't include the 47 liters here below the floor. If you lay down the second row, 1,848 liters. Didn't I promise you? Pretty exciting stuff. Those rear cargo numbers mean it has more space than a Neo ES6, and that's before you consider the sizable 81 liter frunk. The Y also claims a better drag coefficient than the ES6, just 0.24 compared to the 0.26 of the Neo. The Hi-Fi Y has a very different, shall we say, ethos than its most direct and obvious competitor, the Neo ES6, whereas that car's interior is very minimalist, with also a minimum number of screens, just a center screen and a digital instrument cluster and a small HUD. This car is very, very high-tech, with tons and tons of screens. Let us do a roll call, shall we? Right in front of me is a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster screen. Above that is a ridiculously large 22.9 inch HUD. We'll dig more into that once we start driving the car a little later. Then we have a 17 inch 3K OLED center screen here with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8155 processor. Over there, a 15 inch passenger screen with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8250 processor, and finally, a 9.2 inch digital rear view mirror, because the rear window is about that big. There's a ton to dig into when it comes to this 17 inch center screen, but first let me talk about the 15 inch passenger screen over there. It is simply for entertainment. What I mean is that it can display uh, videos and you can select music and things like that, but you can't do things like input navigation directions. Let's talk about this center screen, shall we? 
The Hi-Fi Z had a crazy robot arm screen that could be adjusted on multiple axes and also spin around. This thing isn't quite so crazy, but it's still pretty awesome. That's because it has Hi-Fi Bot, their name, for this. You can adjust the angle of the screen by up to 25 degrees, as you can see here. In addition to being able to use it, uh, doing it using your touchpad here, you can also do it automatically by adjusting your seat. As you see, it adjusts a little bit. And finally, if you hit this mode, you can then manually adjust it like so. The UI of this center screen is also very useful, and it reminds me of one of the things I like the most about the Hi-Fi brand. For all the complexity, for all the technology in here, they really pay attention to the details, the details that make it a better user experience. Take, for example, here on the center screen, the main menu, by long press in the middle, all of these little widgets are customizable, like you would have on your iPhone. So if I go here, let's say, instead I want to have, I don't know, this function for opening the doors. Add and then done, and now I can access that. That's true for the secondary menu as well. That's also customizable. It's just these little things that make it easier to use that I really appreciate. Another one I would add to that is the fact that there's a built-in back function, a return function on the screen. So say I go to my music here, I wanna to return to my main screen. If I gently swipe from left to right on this side, boop, we're back to the main menu. It seems like Hi-Fi is taking a page out of the Lee Auto Book because they've also got an optional refrigerator. Here in the center console, if we pop this open, then open this other door, you've got a six liter refrigerator that they say can hold up to 10 330 milliliter cans of soda, your basic standard soda can. It can also heat things as well, so it's not just a refrigerator. In fact, it can keep things anywhere from negative six to 50 degrees Celsius. That's 21 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. The Hi-Fi Y has two available sound systems. Most cars come with a 14-speaker Meridian sound system, but if you get one of the higher spec cars, you can get the 23-speaker Meridian system, which is making 2,820 watts of sound power, so to speak. And that's 23 speakers only if you don't include the two tiny speakers built into the headrest of the driver's seat. That system also has 7.1.4 surround sound. Because you're never going to run out of things to talk about when it comes to the interior of the Hi-Fi Y, they've also decided not to waste the blank spaces between the screens here on the dashboard. Instead, they've made them into a surface that can be magnetized. In other words, I can take a phone like this with a little magnet on the back and stick it onto the dash like so. Now, Hi-Fi doesn't imagine you're going to be sticking your phone to the dashboard very often. Instead, they picture it as a place that you can put family photos or pictures or something like that. Kind of like you would see on the dashboard of a World War II fighter plane when the pilot's about to go into battle, maybe a one-way mission. So he grabs the photo of his family. He looks at it lovingly, he kisses it, and he puts it right back on there. I'm sat inside of this car to show you something that is going to be standard on all Hi-Fi Y models, but isn't available on all of the pre-production cars here at the Test Drive event, and that is the Hi-Fi port. That will be the thing up here. What is the Hi-Fi port? Put simply, the Hi-Fi port is just a kind of socket you can take and do things like this install an ipad pro here not only can you put things like this there's also a 60 watt usb type c charging point right here so that means your ipad pro one won't run out batteries but you can also power other devices for example you can uh, put in a projector which you can then lay down the back seats open up the trunk and project a movie straight out the back of the car this whole hi-fi port thing feels like a way to just resolve the fact that they don't have rear screens, but it is pretty interesting and I've never seen it in any other car. The hi-fi Y is certainly one of the easiest cars to get into, that is for sure. Once you're inside, you have plenty of space. 2.95 meter wheelbase means a lot of leg room here, as well as a decent amount of headroom. Headroom is pretty good here because there's kind of a cut in the roof with a overhead glass. So you have pretty good headroom here. Middle seat, definitely not as good, noticeably less. I'm again, five foot nine, 1.75 meters tall. The seats have heating as standard. They have a cup holder here in the middle. And then of course you have a fold down area here with two USB type C charging ports. However, if this is not enough headroom for you, you can also independently open up this and then you have essentially infinite headroom 
Because I know you're wondering, yes, you can do this when the car is moving, but only at low speeds and ideally not in a parking garage or anywhere else with overhead obstacles. The Hi-Fi Y is available with either a single rear motor, making 247 kilowatts and 410 newton meters of torque, or dual motors, which make a much healthier 371 kilowatts and 620 newton meters of torque. The latter powertrain will urge you to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.7 seconds. Zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.7 seconds definitely isn't the fastest in this class. The ES6 is both faster on paper and from behind the wheel. However, I have to say, I don't really think it matters that much, to be honest. When you're driving this thing in almost any situation, merging on the highway inside the city, it has plenty of power. Even the rear motor version, which has a 0 to 100 kilometer per hour time of 6.8 or 6.9 seconds, depending on which battery pack you choose, will definitely be enough for your daily commute. The Y comes with two different battery packs. The first is 76.6 kilowatt hours. It's a blade battery, which means it's sourced from BYD. There's also a larger pack that's 115 kilowatt hours. The rear motor car, when equipped with the smaller battery pack, gets 560 kilometers of range on the CLTC cycle. When equipped with the larger packs, it gets 810 kilometers. The dual motor performance version only comes with the 115 kilowatt hour pack and it gets a claimed 765 kilometers. One reason it's able to achieve that is because, just like the Neo ES6, it can deactivate the front motor when you're driving on the highway for more efficient movement. As with the center console and other features in this car, it just feels like they've put a lot of thought into certain things. I pointed this out on the Z, but I have to say it again. One of my favorite features is the fact that the shift pedals here on the back of the steering wheel Obviously, there's no transmission. These are not for shifting a transmission. They allow you to switch between the different settings for your region, right? But if you pull both of them at the same time, now you've switched over so you can change between the different driving modes, between sport, eco, and comfort. It's, it's these little things that just make me feel like they put a lot of effort into this car. One thing this car does have that the ES6 doesn't is rear steer, up to 5.4 degrees of rear steer. That's more than the 4.5 degrees that is standard on the EQS, by the way. If you want the 10 degrees that's available on the EQS, remember, you have to pay an extra subscription fee. Rear steer means that you have a noticeably smaller turning radius than you would expect from a car that measures around 5 meters in length. It also adds to stability at higher speeds, for example, when you're changing lanes on the highway. Hi-Fi has their own driver assistance system called Hi-Fi Pilot. That system has a bunch of different sensors, over 30 of them, and there is the option to choose a LiDAR unit that you can have mounted on the upper windshield there. These pre-production cars, however, do not have the Hi-Fi Pilot system activated, so we're not going to be able to experience it today. So what about that 22.9 inch heads up display? Truth be told, it's not quite as useful as I had hoped. Yes, it's massive, but it doesn't feel like all that space is being used very efficiently. The result is something that looks empty. The Hi-Fi Y has a double wishbone front suspension and 5-link rear, but lacks the air suspension of the more expensive X and Z. I consider the Hi-Fi Z to be the best handling and most engaging Chinese electric vehicle I've ever driven. That's a high standard and one that the Hi-Fi Y, with its cheaper price and SUV body style, was never going to achieve. With that said, the Y doesn't disappoint. The steering, while incredibly light, is also quite direct, and the suspension's constant damping control system means the ride is very comfortable. I perhaps expected it to be a bit sportier after my experience with the Hi-Fi Z, but it's still very good at being a large, luxurious electric SUV. As a big fan of the outrageousness of the X and the Z, I have to admit I was a little bit worried when I heard that Hi-Fi was going to try and make a more mainstream, a more normal SUV. As it turned out, I needn't have been concerned. This thing might be a little bit more down to earth compared to the X and Z, but it's not an earth as we know it.